Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Friday. This day, June 5th, 2020. If you can hear me okay, if you want to say hello. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Yes, I can't hear you. Great. Good morning, everybody. I um, hope your sonnets are going well. Uh, today, I want to give you as much time to work on your uh, sonnets, to try out a couple of lines if you have some, uh, whether they're in your wiki or whether you want to practice saying them today in, in, in our live session. I want to uh, start, just spend a few minutes here with the example that I started yesterday. Again, just to try to explain a little bit of my thought process to give you some, some insight into how I approach the sonnet. It doesn't mean you have to do the same thing, but try to find a way to bring together right, the rhyme, the uh, iambic pentameter, the structure, making sure we have a turn or a volta at uh, the third quatrain, right? trying to bring in examples of figurative language, all of those things, trying to bring it into one poem. Yesterday I talked about the approach I took by categorizing certain words, listing them, by the way they sound, by by rhyming. And I talked about how I came up with the topic of the C based on some of the words that I looked at here in this, uh, in these lists here. And then I came up with a list of figurative language options that actually I ended up not using. It was funny because I got going this morning and I finished the sonnet and I looked back and realized I didn't use any of the examples here that I'd listed here. So, you know, what works for you? If it helps to come up with a list of figurative language options and try to fit them in, fine. For me, in this particular case, it didn't turn out that way. Although that's that was my intention, I it didn't work out. Now, this first draft, this is, again, just a first draft, and I'm still looking at a few lines here, but I want to give you some examples of um, some types of figurative language. I, I haven't identified all of them here, but I've identified a few, looking at iambic pentameter and looking at just a few lines here. Um, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit larger, maybe. Okay. All right, so I have three quatrains and one couplet. Notice that the third quatrain begins with the word but, and I would recommend using either the connector but. I like but because it's uh, one word, one syllable, and you can easily bring in another word that stresses. Remember that we have to start weak, weak strong, da da. All right, so. I tried to include a turn here, and let's look at this. So the first stand, the first quadrain. All right, so it reads, No ordinary waves were called to chat. To glance across the dawn and feel the grit, the taste of salt like sailing sour as spat, the air that pierced the skin with teeth that bit. So hopefully you can hear the iambic pentameter. The air that pierced the skin with teeth that bit. Now, notice I, I'm not necessarily reading each line so marked like da 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 da. So you don't have to read it like that. But when you're design, when you're developing each line, I want you to think and overstress it so that you're certain that the words that you're stressing are important. Notice that I'm not stressing and that the with and that, right? These are not content words. These are more like function words that really don't have a lot of meaning, right? They certainly don't have as much meaning as words like air, pierced, skin, teeth, and bit. Those words are content words. Those are good words to stress because they have more meaning. Articles have little meaning. Prepositions, little meaning. Right? Function words really don't have a lot of meaning. So when you're developing your lines, look at where you're stressing. And you can come up with a system here if it helps uh, to maybe capitalize the stresses. Like if you want to do it like this, and, and air that 
appears, right? And you can capitalize the words, even the syllables, if it's a multi-syllable word, to help visualize where you're stressing and then also help you realize which words are following under the normal stress and maybe which words you're stressing that don't follow the normal stress. All right. Uh, the next quatrain, no turtles dared to roam to fear a threat. Their waters filtered friends and foe till dawn. Had realized the reason for their fret. Buffets that once rejoiced forever gone. Now notice I'm using commas here. I can put a pause in the middle of the line, right? It doesn't have to read all the way across, it, right? The next line, but wait, right? I could have, have a pause there. I have, I have two separate sentences there. But wait, her majesty, she lives forsake. She strives, she tries, she thrives, she peaks, she seeks. Emerges, emerges through the trash to be awake. No time to sulk, to droop, appearing meek. So here I've put in bold because I'm not really happy with this line. I may go back later and take another look. I really don't like trash, but I need something that represents something negative that re relates to trash, but I'm not crazy about that word. But it, it fits. It fits in terms of iambic pentameter, right? I'm trying to hit the, the rhymes at the end, at the end of the line, sake, awake, seek, and meek. And notice I'm trying to choose very simple words. In most, case, in most cases, they're single syllable words. And that's what I would recommend. Don't try to make it more complicated getting into too many syllable words because then it gets really difficult, right? Especially more than two syllables, I would, I would uh, suggest not, not doing that. Then the last line, again, her majesty will rise with great delight. Her waters wave, her wind, her salt unite. Okay, so hopefully you can hear the iambic. Notice again the words. I could go back and, and capitalize to emphasize the, the um uh, to emphasize the stresses, right? To emphasize the parts of the word that I'm stressing. Waters has two syllables, so I could stress wa, you know, at the beginning. Her waters, and then wave, her wind. Notice I'm, I'm hitting wave, I'm stressing wind, I'm stressing salt, and then unite. And so I'm not stressing her, right? That's not a, that's not a, a content word. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of meaning. Her wind. Her salt, right? So that's going to be the normal stress when we talk in everyday language, right? The salt, pass the salt, the salt, right? That's we weak, strong, right? So those articles, pronouns, right? Prepositions, those are usually function words. Those are words usually that we don't stress. If we do stress, then it sounds a little bit awkward. It sounds, uh, it doesn't quite fit into the iambic pentameter. And this is one of the greatest challenges for writing poems, writing a sonnet in particular, iambic pentameter following that da 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 All right, so I'm showing you this as an example, not as the greatest example in the world, but I want, more importantly, to show you the thought process, right? I, I did some of these things with not even knowing, right? I came up with some figurative language. I might come back and go back later, maybe to fit some things in, but some of these lines... I feel for me personally are better than others, and some of them I can go back and change and maybe uh, bring in some other options, right? But I try to include different types of figurative language, and again, it's just a puzzle, bringing all of those in and uh, bringing, bringing it into the form, the structure of, of a sonnet. All right, so I want to give you guys the rest of today. Um, I really would like to hear a couple of your lines to see whatever you have in your wiki. I'll be going in today looking at your wiki. Uh, please work as much as you can in this space so that even if it's just one line, you don't have a completed line or a completed poem, that's fine. Uh, I just I, It helps me to see kind of how you're progressing. If it helps to bring in, uh, you know, like what I've done here and use your wiki to list words, Right. And you can use use the wiki as whatever works for you. Right. If you want to list some figurative language options, that's fine. Just keep it clear where the poem itself is. Maybe 
keep that at the top so that I can uh, find it easily and then and use the rest of that space as you need to, right, to help you with this, this process. All right, so I'm going to go ahead um, and pause for now, and you guys just jump in. If, uh, if you want me to look at something, if you want to practice re reciting one of your lines, um, and, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Any questions about, about the sonnet? No teacher. Nope. All right. So I'll go ahead and mute my mic again. Just jump in and mute your mic at any time with your questions or comments and, um, and I'll be looking through your wikis. Teacher. Yes, uh, Elizabeth. Could you please check my wiki? Uh-huh, I'll check it right now. Thank you. All right, uh, Elizabeth, it looks uh, good. Do you want to read it? Out loud right now? If you want to, if you're if you want to practice reading it, it's good. You've got a good start. But I'd like to. Can you read it? Yeah. Okay. A lion, strong and mighty. This is mom. An ant that small yet powerful is dad. Be careful. She's a potent ticking bomb come closer he will always make you glad mm -hmm. good I think yeah I, I like it i think i can read it that well but yeah no no it's good it, you follow iambic pentameter you got mom rhymes mom rhymes with bomb dad rhymes with glad so that's that's good um, I like how you're stressing all of the strong words like lion, so a lion, strong and mighty. So all of the stresses are are right on point, right on the, the right words, I think, uh, that you're using. And I like how you're contrasting uh, your mother and father, right? So that's good. So for you guys who are trying to, if you're going to be including more than one person, uh, that's this is something you need to think about is how you want to balance and and really reveal both individuals in this case uh, throughout the poem. Be careful, she's a potent uh -huh, taking bomb, right? And yeah, so yeah, it's, it looks good, uh, Elizabeth. Have you have you thought about? Uh, I'm curious. Uh, did you come up with? Uh, can you explain a little bit how you approached this first quatrain? If you, yeah, what kind of strategy you used to put this together? Well. I only thought about presenting their personalities, basically. So first, I just compare them with uh, like an animal. I actually looked looked up that information, like animals compared to personalities. So those That's are the two animals. Those are those are the two animals I found, and I tried to describe them and um, emphasize who it was. And then I, in the last two lines, I put like a more specific description of them. Mm -hmm. And that's how I wrote it. The last and one was very difficult for me. Was it? Yes, because I couldn't find the words to make the pattern work. Did you come up with the thinking about the rhyming scheme? At what point did you come up with the rhyming scheme? Um, I just, since I wrote the first two lines, I just looked for words that rhymes with mom and dad. 
And okay. when when I saw the word bomb, I said, okay, that's a good word to <laughs> probably describe her. That's good. And, <laughs> and I was going to use the word sad for dad, but I was going to put something like, you will never be sad, but I couldn't make it work, so I changed it for glad. Did you come up thinking about the fourth line? You said it was more difficult. Did you come up with come closer first or he will always make you glad first? Come closer. I have come closer since the since the first line I wrote. Like before all of the lines I I wrote. Oh, okay. Because That's I wrote I, I mean I mean I wrote many many versions of the fourth line that's what i mean okay so i have come closer since the first uh uh since the first um uh, like how can i say that uh, version of the fourth line yeah the first draft or the first version mm -hmm. yeah or first revision um so so do you have an idea where you're taking this or are you just taking it quad train by quad train at this point Mm, well, I thought that first in this quad train, I'm just going to leave it like this, like presenting them, and then in the uh, upcoming uh, quad trains, I'm going to talk about them, but as like as the two of them together, not separately. Okay, that's going to be like the twist or the volta or the turn. Um, or yeah, is that the second quad train? I don't, I'm not sure. Probably, probably in the second one, I'm going to talk about them both. Uh, but in the, since I'm talking about that, uh, about their personalities, I'm mm -hmm. going to, in the second line, I'm probably going to talk about like the good things. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, for all you guys, when you're thinking about it, at least when I was thinking about my poem, I I had kind of an idea what the turn was even before I started, just so that I knew that there was some logical turn that would be, you know, uh, you know, that I wanted to use. So I think probably it's a good idea to kind of intuitively, maybe you don't know exactly what you're going to say, but you have kind of an idea about what that turn's going to look like in terms of the first two quad trains versus the third quad train, and then you can decide later on the couplet how you want to end it. Um, but I think it's a good point at the beginning of the process to kind of have an idea about where you want to take the turn. But yeah, good start, uh, Elizabeth, and thank you for sharing your, your ideas here with your, your strategies. All right, very good. So what we want to do, guys, is try to come up with our first quad train at least by Monday, okay? And I want to give, uh, I want to have time to give you guys some feedback, whether it's in the live class or outside of class. If you guys finish the first quad train outside of class before class on Monday, send me a chat, send me a message just to ask to for me to check it, and I'll check it. Uh, otherwise, I can, we can take time to look at it uh, again on Monday. I'm going to be giving you guys uh, much of the class, uh, at least on Monday and Tuesday, uh, to be working on the sonnet. So really try to get um, get as much out as possible. Get that first draft. You can always go back and rework lines or change them up a little bit. But just try to get your um, ideas out as best you can with uh, thinking about uh, iambic pentameter. And so that you have time to go back and, and receive feedback and make those changes as needed. Okay, so our, our next assignment will be due on Monday. And um, yeah, do, do your best to try to complete that for, for Monday. We'll have a, our last review on Wednesday, so we'll have uh, Wednesday to do that. And uh, yeah, so and our final poetry reading will be in a week next Friday. All right, so we still have two more weeks. Um, is that right? Am I saying that? Is that, am I right or am I? Yeah, yeah, the 12th is going to be our poetry reading. 
And then we're going to have one more week of classes that's going to be dedicated to the e-portfolio. And I don't want to get into the e-portfolio now. Uh, we, we're going to have a, a whole week to work on the e-portfolio. So I don't want you to worry about the e-portfolio at this point, but just to give you um, an idea of what's coming up, we're going to conclude on the 12th, the poetry readings, and then the we'll have one more full week to dedicate towards the e-portfolio and we'll talk about, you know, websites and how to do all of that. And we'll have, you know, more than enough time, I think, that whole week to dedicate to the e-portfolio. All right, so I think we'll stop there, guys. And um, yeah, keep uh, working on your poems. Again, shoot me a, a chat if you want me to look at something. Otherwise, uh, have a good weekend and I'll see all of you on Monday. All right, take care. Hey, teacher, excuse me, I had a question. Yes, Lisa, go ahead. Um, how I upload the, the first quadrant of sonnets? Because in the classroom, say that is for a Sunday, for this Sunday. So yeah, there's, uh, there, uh, there is uh, nothing to upload to the virtual classroom, the assignment. Okay, I'll be checking all of your work in the wiki. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions about anything? No, no. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. All right, guys. Well, take care then, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. You too. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Have a